On last night's program, sounded off on the sanctuary cities. Watch this. Kate Steinle, killed back in July of 2015, walking arm in arm with her father on a pier in San Francisco, shot and killed by an illegal immigrant, Jose Garcia Zarate. This man had seven prior felony convictions, four involving narcotics. This was his facing of a sixth deportation. At the time, he shot and killed this innocent woman. Sanctuary cities tonight, those that support them, they are to blame for the death of Kate Steinle. And joining us now with more reaction to the shocking verdict in the murder trial of Kate Steinle is America First Action spokesman and senior advisor, former Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Um, and you, you must be just so disappointed with what happened here in San Francisco. I know I'm disappointed and disgusted having been a prosecutor and been first lady of that city to see this kind of outrageous miscarriage of justice. Uh, will anything happen to change with this verdict that happened in the debate in this country on sanctuary cities? Uh, not, like, not likely, not as long as Congress continues to kick the can down the road on uh, illegal immigration and immigration reform in this country. Look, both sides uh, have been using this thing as a political football, looking for political leverage. There's basically no will on the United States Congress to fix our broken immigration system. The only elected official in Washington, D.C., who understands that this is a crisis and has a sense of urgency about it is President Donald Trump who campaigned on it. Look, this whole thing is ass backwards. You know, I sit there, I, li I listen to the, the, the mothers. Kate Steinle's family still uh, can find no peace. no peace. And now I hear that ICE says they're going to deport this guy. It's too late. Here's what my problem is with them deporting the guy now. I like Jeff Sessions' idea, charge him federally, maybe rack up 10, 15, 20 years where he can sit in a prison because if they deport him right now, he will be right back in the country because our border is not sealed. For it's heaven's porous. sakes, seal the damn border. Yeah, seal the border, build the wall, follow the law. These are the problems that we're having and California is really just a pitiful example of how bad this problem has gotten. And we, you know, we were speaking earlier in the program about elections coming up. We heard from Jeff Sessions earlier on Tucker's program. Sean saying sanctuary cities to blame for the death of Kate Steinle. But now we have a president with the will and wherewithal, and I'm sure you've had conversations with him, Sheriff, about this issue. Precisely. And push is going to have to come to shove for the United States Department of Justice. Look, there are federal laws that are being violated by sanctuary cities, catch and release policies. And the Justice Department is going to have to develop the teeth, put some teeth into their rhetoric and charge these officials, charge these mayors, charge these uh, law enforcement officials that are going to defy federal law. Sanctuary cities are illegal. We know it. And all we see is the back and forth, the threatening of, of pulling uh, funding. And then you get some activist judge who gets in the way and he delays that and says that they cannot do it because uh, Congress has already approved the funding. But they didn't do that when President Obama threatened to pull funding from schools from not having uh, allowing men to use women's bathrooms. So oh at some point, the Justice Department, Jeff Sessions, is going to have to charge one of these individuals. Forget about the funding stuff, all right? Mm -hmm. Charge one of them criminally. One of these statutes uh, can end up in, in a person upon conviction serving 10 years in a federal prison. Some public official is going to have to be charged and prosecuted to get the attention of every, anybody, everybody else. But until then, the Congress, as I said, they don't have the will. Kimberly, they do not yeah. have the will to fix this broken immigration system because both sides are using it for political leverage. No, you're absolutely right. And Greg Jarrett was on earlier. He, you know, concurs, feels the same way as an attorney that, you know, the law is there. Somebody's going to need to be prosecuted and be held accountable to actually stop the flow of blood coming from these criminal recidivists who keep coming in, are deported, come back in again, commit more crimes, and no one seems to matter. It's almost like you got to give these people an apology. Oh, I'm sorry we have to prosecute you, or we can't let you come back in and forth to commit more crimes against innocent, law-abiding people. I mean, when you look at this picture of what happened here, and you see this guy, I did really, honestly, I cannot believe that San Francisco did this. As bad as some of the things they've done in the past, how did this guy, a felon in possession of a gun, not be convicted of anything? I mean, it's unbelievable. 
Well, the thing that's most uh, disgusting to me is that this illegal alien had more rights than Kate Steinle yeah. and Kate Steinle's family. Yeah, he's going to get credit time served or something. That's it's, the it's thing that chaps my rear end. It really does. That uh, illegal alien has more rights than a United States citizen. But again, look, Congress, all they do is pay lip service. Now there's this uh, funding for the wall that's, that's tied up in, uh, you know, they hide it in other bills. Right. And then Chuck Schumer comes along and threatens to shut down the government if that's included in a bill. And then the GOP backs off. Look, it is high time in this country. The American people have spoken. They spoke last November and they continue to speak. They want this immigration, illegal immigration uh, crisis fixed. They want it solved. We are a sovereign nation, and if you're going to be a sovereign nation, you have to have borders, and you have to protect those borders. That's what we expect our federal officials to do. Isn't that the bare minimum we can do in terms of a, a basic decency, a basic expectation of public safety, that we can protect people, an innocent girl and her father walking down the street to not be slaughtered? Well, you know, you've seen some of the victims there. Some law enforcement officers have been killed by uh, people illegally in the country. Other citizens, uh, you know, have been victimized as well. And when the yeah. United States federal government cannot protect its, its citizens from an illegal invasion, and that's what they is. They're allowing people to come into the country illegally and set up residency. And then when they kick them out, they come back over, they kick them out, they continue to come back over. This is a cat and mouse game by these illegal aliens. They know it. They know that there's little that will happen to them, especially if they hide out in a sanctuary city where they're provided a safe haven. Unbelievable. It's really, it's really outrageous, and it seems to be getting worse, but um, I have faith that the president is going to do something about it, and we're waiting on Jeff Sessions to do it as well. Um, Sheriff Clark, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. That's the criticism, Larry. You know, they're saying, look, this is a party of hypocrisy, that they claim to hold right. this banner high above their heads, looking down with disdain at others who are not so, you know, perfect in the way they conduct themselves, yet look at it now. Look at what's happening. Well, that's right. And in the case of, of John Conyers, uh, I'm probably not a good person to ask whether or not he should resign because for 47 years, in my opinion, he's been completely useless. Oh, this is a man whose uh, area is largely Detroit. Uh, poverty has gone up. Uh, you find uh, uh, the, the proliferation of, of children uh, being born without, without fathers in the home. 25% uh, of kids were born out, black kids were born outside of wedlock 50 years ago when, Congress, when Conyers uh, first uh, came to Congress. And now about 73% of black kids are born outside of wedlock. They don't want vouchers. They want to jack up the minimum wage that hurts uh, minorities and women who are working part-time, often on minimum wage. They don't even want to think about privatizing Social Security, which a study has shown would, would disproportionately benefit uh, black workers because they, they die earlier. So all these policies have hurt black people. Under Obama for eight years, the black poverty rate got worse. The wealth gap between the average white household and black household widened. Uh, uh, the labor force participation rate for black men uh, got worse. Their policies of tax spend and regulation have not worked and they've disproportionately hurt the very people that they claim they care about, women and minorities. Well, wh what do you say to this, Tanine? Because, yeah, this is the problem. They really have campaigned, uh, profited in terms of, you know, fundraising, getting money in from a lot of women's groups and minority groups that feel like this is, you know, this is the party that represents us, that we feel protected by, that here's our voice. And yet now look at this. It's been an abysmal failure. And, and Doug is saying if the party is to continue and try to, you know, prosper and go forward and actually try to take advantage of some uh, opportunities coming up, they may have to say you've got to go. Well, I, Larry Elder makes a great point. I mean, look at the uh, urban communities mm -hmm. that are run by Democrat politicians sure. that have been in shambles for many, many years, failing public schools, high crime rates. Look at Chicago, for yeah, example. Chicago. I mean, listen, the, the voters need to look at how their communities have not progressed, how their communities have not turned around for many, many years. John Conyers is a perfect example. He's been in, in office way too long, and uh, he's done nothing really for his community to really turn it around. Around. How, Look, how do you see it? I, I see it differently. This next election is going to be a referendum on the Trump administration and its failure to get a lot done. Even if uh, we do get, as I expect, a tax bill, it's an unpopular tax bill. There's control of the House and the Senate both at stake. 
these issues are a distraction and a serious one to the party, as I was saying before, and as you accurately summarized. And I want the Democrats to win as a centrist party that is inclusive. To do that, they need people like Conyers and they need people like Al Franken to go, and we need to develop a set of policies that represent all the people, not just a liberal ideological block. All right. Well, so what's the what's the idea going forward then, Deneen? What do the Republicans do to point this out to maybe try to capitalize because there's some vulnerabilities sure. coming forward? Well, they need to get out there and talk about pro-growth initiatives, talk about school choice, talk about lower taxes, mm -hmm. less regulations. This will help turn the economy around, turn the country around, create jobs. Mm -hmm. That is what they need to do is to get the message out. It's not black, white, male, female, whatever. This is an American issue for folks to understand uh, what these policies yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. And expecting and demanding, you know, results. Larry. And we were talking earlier in your segment about illegal immigration. Yes. The Democrats don't want to do anything about that. Nothing. Uh, one of the leading economists, uh, George Borjas of Harvard, probably done more work on the impact of legal and illegal immigration than maybe anybody else, said there's no question that the proliferation of unskilled illegal aliens uh, poses competition for work for inner city people and puts downward pressure on their wages. And Democrats don't want to do anything at all about this, even though it is this hurting Democrat the very people would love to do a deal about. on immigration right. and tightening the border. Larry. Oh, well, we found one. <laughs> well, <yes. laughs> There's the needle in the haystack, Doug exactly. Shown. I'll, I'll, I'll be guilty to that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Doug, no, Doug, Doug, has, Doug has always been reasonable. He Doug has is. always been reasonable. I, I wish more people in your party felt the way you do, honestly. He's Thank like you, in law Larry. school. The reasonable Return man the standard. Exactly. Remember that. Quid pro quo. All right, you guys. Thank you.